everyone. I'm Adrian. So um, I actually moved here from the Philippines about 10, 11 years ago, and I decided to take up um, culinary management. So um, I pretty much got my inspiration and my, my start uh, cooking from my mom. Uh, she's like pretty much the best home cook that there is to me. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to take it a step further and then decided to take up culinary management at Georgetown College. Um, after that, I did maybe two to three years in the restaurant industry. And with that, I also did a bunch of catering for like different businesses. Um, well, I worked with um, catering companies to do that. So um, one of the highlights for me is um, the catering company that I worked with. Uh, we happen to be um, catering for the Toronto International Film Festival back in 2011, 2012. I can't remember the exact year, but I found that the really cool thing about that was that I got to meet uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. So that was pretty awesome. Um, I wish I met more people, but I mean, to me back then, he was just pretty much a star. So I was very starstruck. I, I barely said anything to him. I mean, I can't um, so then um, after that, I really wanted to kind of um, just uh, kind of take a step away from the res restaurant industry. It was just such a different dynamic and um, I just didn't see myself as being a chef. So I decided to become a food stylist. And uh, with that, I had to train under a food stylist, like a seasoned one, and then I trained from her. So uh, that was really cool. And then basically I've been with her company for the past six years now. And uh, with food styling, basically that's um, making food look good for camera and for magazines for different brands so we get to work with a lot of different food brands and uh, develop recipes for them and make it look good for their websites or for magazines and even tv um i don't know if you've seen around uh toronto um those ads of catelli pasta so it's basically just a bowl of regular pasta and basically i styled that so and that's pretty much a highlight for me because I don't often see my work around the city, mostly online. So for me, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Super cool. All right. Um, so what are you making for today? So for today, I'm making the um, a Vietnamese noodle bowl. Um, I'm not entirely sure how to say it in the dialect. Christina, how do you say it? <laughs> uh, it's bún thịt nong. Oh, okay. I won't lie, yeah. even the way I say it, um, my parents and a lot of other Vietnamese folks will say that my accent's pretty, like, washed out, but I'm uh -huh. trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, we'll be making it with grilled pork today, and, um, yeah, basically, I wanted to make a recipe that was um, done outside and something that's refreshing. Um, I find that whenever I eat uh, uh, the Vietnamese noodle bowls, I find that I always feel like I'm eating something really healthy and flavorful and even refreshing because half the time when, during summer, I'm always eating really, really heavy stuff. So this is kind of um, a really good dish for me. I don't often eat salad. So for me, um, this is really delicious and I get pretty much everything um, that I want in it, it's like a, a little bit of... Um, uh, sweetness, um, I get salt, and even a little bit of spiciness. So for me, this is a perfectly balanced meal. Um, so yeah, uh, everyone ready to get started? We're so excited. <laughs> so I'm going to, um, I'm going to spotlight your other video just so that we can see um, the ingredients you're working with and the process. Perfect. All right. So uh, first of all, we're gonna make the marinade for the, for the pork. Um, so this is the pork that I'm going to be using today. Um, so it's pork chop. Um, I got it with the bone in. I do prefer it with the bone in. I also prefer it with a little bit of fat, but um, you can take off as much fat as you want, just like in here. 
Um, another cut of meat that you can use is pork tenderloin. Um, another piece of meat that you could use is you can substitute it with um, chicken or even pork belly or if you want to make it vegetarian you can also use tofu. So uh, first of all we'll be making the marinade for the for the meat. So here we're going to be using two tablespoons of brown sugar. Um, one tablespoon of fish sauce. A tablespoon of soy sauce. A tablespoon of sesame oil as well. I really like sesame oil because it just adds a nice little toastiness uh, to the flavor. Um, we're also going to be using some garlic uh, that's finely chopped. So here I made, I have a total of six garlic cloves and um, I'm just going to be using half of it because the other half, the other three garlic cloves, we're going to be using for the dipping sauce. And then a little bit of ginger, so about half a teaspoon, also finely chopped. And then we're also going to be using uh, lemongrass. So with lemongrass, um, it's obviously not, um, it's not going to be broken down at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut and then bruise it. That way just a little bit of the flavor comes through. Now be very careful with this. So we're gonna put that in there and then just mix. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, we're also going to be using uh, sambal, which is a chili garlic sauce. Um, this is optional. Like I like the little bit of spice that's, uh, that comes through when it's cooked. And it also just adds a, lo a lot more flavor as well. So once that's all mixed together, we're going to pour it into, onto the pork. And then just move it around, make sure everything's nicely coated. And make sure to use uh, different tongs for when you're touching meat, as well as a different one for, um, all the other foods that you're going to be using. Uh, so yeah, you can let that marinate for about half an hour. Um, I have one uh, that's been marinating since this morning. That way it develops like a lot more flavor and it's just, the flavors just kind of um, melt together. Now I'm gonna move you guys over to the grill and we can start grilling this. And then after that, we can start preparing the rest of the ingredients. So I'm, my grill is preheated to high. You want that nice sizzle, that way it gets um, nice caramelization and nice color. So as you can see over here, I have um, some that's already been cooked. So you really like, you really want to get some of that nice caramelization from um, the sugars that's in the brown, uh, that's in the marinade, and that way char is usually um, flavor. So yeah, you're just gonna let 
uh, these guys cook for about two, three, maybe even four minutes per side. So yeah, we're just gonna let that keep cooking and then I'm gonna bring you guys back over to um, to our cutting board and we can make our quick pickled carrots. Uh, do you guys have any questions so far? So Dan asked some good questions before. He said, what kind of sugar do you use? Uh, so I like to use brown sugar in a lot of my marinades. Um, so I find that brown sugar, because it already has um, kind of molasses in it, it's just a deeper and it just gives a deeper flavor. Uh, so that to me is just really, really good. I prefer it over white sugar, um, depending on its use. And yeah. <laughs> and there is about Indonesian soy sauce instead of sugar. Um, I'm not entirely sure about that. Uh, what do you mean? Um, Dan, what do you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, I think she used something of like a sambal. If you can show the brand or um that that would is be it, helpful for people there's like is um, it for the garlic sauce um, uh, okay yeah that is a sambal and yeah, yeah i think uh, in, in relation to daniel's question earlier i think uh she's mm -hmm. asking about the sweet um soy sauce the what do you call it <sighs> it's at the tip of my tongue you know the sweet soy sauce mm. uh, like hoisin sauce uh no hoisin? No, I have it in my fridge. I can grab it. <laughs> I can <laughs> run. <laughs> yeah, I use that um, Daniel actually. Um, that soy sauce uh, from um, yeah, Indonesian soy sauce. I, I use that as mm -hmm. well. I find it like uh, it's like muted um, form of uh, soy sauce where you don't have to mm -hmm. add like uh, sugar. So you can experiment with it. It's it tastes. It gives. It blends that umaminess and Asian flavor. Yeah, I feel like it would totally work just because it. Uh, the soy sauce to me is what brings out the uh, saltiness and then if um, since we're already adding sugar um, if your sweet soy sauce is like that you can probably just adjust the, the sugar in it oh he said kepap manis but i think it's okay. isn't it kekap manis daniel mm -hmm. k-a-c-a-p i'm not sure <laughs> yeah, I think it's kick up manis, but I see. yeah. Yeah, I'm so not good. as familiar with that one, but um, I'll make sure to take a look the next time I'm at the grocery store. Sounds very interesting. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to start making the uh, quick pickled carrots. So here I have a, one large carrot that's been um, julienne. So um, about like one large carrot would yield you about a cup of um, julienne carrots. So next we're going to be, um, sometimes I use the microwave, but since we're outside, I'm just going to be using the grill to heat up my uh, pickling liquid. So here I have rice vinegar, so about a quarter cup. And then we're also going to be using a quarter cup of water. Two tablespoons of sugar. And then a pinch of salt. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put that on the stove and then we're going to let it heat up just until um, the sugar dissolves. So it doesn't need to be boiling, but as long as it's, um, just so long as it's, um, it's dissolved, then you should be good. Okay. 
I'm also going to show you what our grilled pork looks like now as well. Yeah, so you got that nice sizzle going. A few grill marks. You can probably let that go for a little bit longer. All right, so our sugar's dissolved. Now we're gonna put it over the carrots. Yeah, just pour it over. And then you're gonna let that sit for about 10 minutes even is good. Um, I'm just gonna put a lid on it and we can um, have it for later. Um, so next we're going to make the dipping sauce for, um, for the dish. So I'm going to start with, I'm actually just going to use the same pot that I used earlier because we're going to need to um, melt the sugars in here as well. And since most of the flavors, um, most of the similar ingredients are all, were already used, I'm just going to use the same pot. That way I don't have to use two of the dishes. So I'm going to use two tablespoons of water. three tablespoons of fish sauce, three tablespoons of sugar, two tablespoons of rice wine vinegar. You want that little bit of tartness. and then lime juice. So I have here a full lime. This should give you about uh, two tablespoons. Sometimes uh, you need a little bit more, depending on your lime. Like this one barely has any juice. <laughs> Do you find that like pre-rolling limes or lemons um, help with the juiciness? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. It was, uh, it's funny because I pre-rolled this before um, starting the presentation, but I guess this one just isn't as juicy. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. There we go. Welcome, Etty. Hi. Just getting home. Nice. Uh, so we're also using um, mirin, which is a sweet cooking, um, almost like vinegar, but it's mostly just uh, a sweet seasoning. Really good. The rest of the garlic. And then if you want a little bit of heat, you can use um, uh, Thai chilies. I'm gonna add just a little bit. Um, if you don't want any spice in it, that's totally fine. You can omit that. Is that the bird's eye chili, the Thai uh, chili peppers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're really spicy, so I'm not gonna put too, too much. And I'm just gonna add a teeny bit of salt. I'm just gonna put that over the heat so that um, the sugars will melt a little bit. Now we're 
getting really close to assembly here. Just gonna clean up my board. Okay, so uh, to assemble, uh, we basically just need uh, romaine lettuce. So I like to cut that really thinly. need your pickled carrots. We're also going to be using cucumber. And then here I also have some herbs. So today we're going to be using some cilantro. Thai basil. And then we have our uh, grilled pork chops here. So we're just going to be slicing that. Just cutting around the bone. I also like serving it with the bone just because uh, to me the bone has so much flavor. Cut it into like little pieces there. Guys, have any questions so far? Adrian, is mirin the same thing that's used for like sushi rice? Yes. Um, yeah. So mirin um, is basically just some kind of sweet uh, seasoning liquid. Um, yeah. So it's. I like to use it in addition to the sugar just because it has a different kind of sweetness as well. It's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> yeah, it's a Japanese uh, sweet wine, right? There you go. Yeah, that's the wine. <laughs> yeah, that they normally like put when you're making sushi. So um, mm -hmm. you put that and it can also like stay like um, good shelf life as well. So yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I also, I almost forgot. We're also going to be using some mint. Wow. Lots of herbs. This is what I love about <laughs> the Vietnamese um, dish as well. There's I know, this, yeah. lots of different herbs. Yeah. We're um, going all of that minus cilantro in our backyard and some yeah. sheep though as well. Nice. So I also have um, crushed peanuts here. And then earlier, um, I also cooked um, the rice noodles. So that's it right there. Now we're pretty much ready to assemble. How do you best cook the rice noodles, um, Adrian? I find that um, well, you can always follow the um, instructions from the package, but mm -hmm. for me, I like to just put it in a pot and then pour some boiling water over it, or sorry, you can boil water and then put the rice noodles in it, give it about 10 
15 minutes and it should be ready for you. It's that's, um, pretty low key. <laughs> that's exactly how my dad does it too. He's like so specific with that technique. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I see. laughs> yeah, I find that if you boil it, it just becomes too soft and then it starts to break on you. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so here we're just going to be putting our rice noodles. Very long rice noodles. And then I like putting it in little sections and then later on um, we just start kind of mixing it all together. So I like to put a little bit of everything in there. So we have our lettuce, cucumber, a little bit of the carrot. Oh, another thing, you can also use um, daikon radish when you quick pickle, uh, when you make your quick little pickle. And then you add your, your grilled pork. There. And then you can garnish with all the herbs that you'd like. I personally like a lot of cilantro. And you can just like tear it. Also have the mint. And then the Thai basil. And then some crushed peanuts. And then you just take your, your dipping sauce from earlier. I like to pour it in a little serving bowl. And then each person can just drizzle that over their portion. Just like that. I'm so hungry. Yeah, so it's a very simple recipe and it's really beautiful. Um, very colorful. That means it's very, very good for you. Again, like I like uh, this recipe just because it's, it has a lot of flavors going, um, especially with the meat and how um, it just has like all the delicious flavors. I like the tartness from the, the carrots and even some dipping sauce. I like the crunch from the, uh, from the roasted peanuts. Um, yeah, it's just a really great dish altogether. Um, it's nice to do outside as well over the grill. Um, so yeah, easy, simple recipe right here. Oh, wow. We're coming over. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that is, you made it look so easy. That it is. Look, it is really easy. Yeah, that's why I really, I really do enjoy making it. It seems um, a little intimidating, but I mean, it's really just simple recipes coming together and then just pretty much all you have to do is uh, chop some veg, um, grill some pork and then you're ready to go. So I, I really enjoy this recipe. Yeah, your kitchen is not, your setup is not even messy. How is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any question or comments? Um, so pretty much um, it's done and it's now we can open the floor to um, everybody who has any question or comments or any anything that you want to share. Okay. So if they don't have like for um, Vidula, she's vegetarian, do you think what do you think mm -hmm. she can put in as a protein? Um, I like to use tofu. Um, just make sure to use the extra firm tofu. That way it doesn't break down on you. 
Um, I know that there are a few brands out there as well. Um, I personally like to use Gardein. Um, they make, um, it's called, I think, chicken, but like it's chick apostrophe N, and it's, uh, it's vegetable based, but it looks like chicken, and it almost tastes like chicken, but it's, um, it's vegan vegetarian. So I also like to use that. Um, you can also marinate it as well. Um, so yeah, I would recommend either tofu or some kind of plant-based um, protein, whatever your choice. Thank you. And mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, Victoria commented, she makes veggie burgers and hot dogs. Amazing. They don't have bone yet. <laughs> And she also puts like <laughs> tofu and veggie. <laughs> yeah, I think this is like the first um, meat uh, dish, apart from Celia's shrimp, which is supposed to mm -hmm. seafood, but this is like the first uh, meat uh, dish that um, we presented um, in this series of workshops. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I personally eat meat. Um, I love meat. And uh, my, mm -hmm. my two boys, they, well, my, my big boy, <laughs> My son, they love meat, so, so yeah, thanks for um, sharing this. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I believe Dan also asked if you could use roasted vegetable. Yeah, for sure. Um, I personally love zucchini, so um, you can also use that. Maybe you can even use, um, you can even use beets, peppers, cauliflower would be really great. Um, pretty much it's, your options are endless. I really like this marinade and, um, Pretty much almost anything. <laughs> yeah, um, Dan brought up tempeh. It's such a great alternative too because it is more firm and the texture of it mm -hmm. is closer to like um, like roasted pork or beef. Um, yeah. I actually went back to eating meat because I missed my cultural foods too much. I was like uh -huh. vegetarian for over three years and um, yeah, I, I like missed out on a lot of Vietnamese food, I would say. There are a lot of like vegetarian options, but yeah, yeah it, sure. it's very hard. <laughs> it is hard. Um, for Filipino uh, dishes as well, it's a lot of meat as well. So growing up, um, I've never heard of anybody who is vegetarian. Um, yeah. The culture itself, like we eat a lot of like um, vegetables, but we also eat a lot of like eat so so yeah um i just try to eat more vegetables <laughs> to counterbalance the meat and we try yeah, to like pick uh, yeah we try to pick the good meat as well and um to eat like um less meat uh, but good quality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, Vitula asked, will tofu be okay on grill? Uh, yeah, so I've used tofu on the grill before. Um, it just it, just make sure that it is the extra firm. The firm one doesn't hold up as much, but what you can also do is you can put, um, I know that uh, they kind of sell those mats that you put on the grill. Um, and uh, that way nothing falls underneath. Or um, if you, you can also cook this indoors. So if you have a grill pan, you can use that. That way um, it'll hold up a little bit better. Or you can also just pan sear. But uh, I would recommend the extra firm, um, extra firm tofu. And you would do the same like uh, marinade uh, for the tofu, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Correct. All right. Um. Yeah, like there's um so many ingredients involved that it can seem so like intimidating to approach, but it's honestly um it's so simple, and I love yeah. that like building of flavors as well that comes in a lot mm -hmm. of Vietnamese food. Yeah, um, totally. Like most of it is in assembling. There's like got one as well which is like a rice paper roll I think that's what it's called mm. and um it's a lot of those like same steps of just like prepping and then when it yeah. comes to actual assembly and eating it's like the fastest part <laughs> I know yeah <laughs> 
So would this be like similar um, with that, uh, Christina? You would just roll it in the rice paper? Yeah, you have the rice paper roll. Um, usually that one is made with like a sauteed beef that's like sliced really thinly mm -hmm. and shrimp. Or you could do a vegetarian one. Like I remember I made it with my friend when I was vegetarian. So I did like a saute with like carrots and taro and some other veggies. And, mm. and the dipping sauce, you could do um, the one that Adrian did, like the nook mom, which is the fish sauce based. Or you could do a peanut poison sauce one. Either one is like really good. <laughs> Oh, I love using the peanut poison sauce. Yeah. That one's really good too. Yeah. Sometimes I like mixing it in this as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, it's really good that you can use like different dips and they mm -hmm. like, they change up like so yeah. much of the flavor profile, but it's still both like so complimentary. Mm -hmm. So is the peanut poison sauce comes in a bottle or? You make it yourself. Oh, you make it yourself. Okay. Yeah, you just mix like for my family we do peanuts poison sauce and um fried shallots okay yeah and you use the raw nuts right and you roast it is that how you prep the peanuts? oh no the sorry nuts? it's like peanut butter you can use like grass <laughs> <laughs> oh you can okay so it's peanut butter that you yeah use. yeah okay so it would be good if it's like like they don't put like extra sugar in it the yeah yeah you can always yeah because hoisin sauce is already like really sweet right and how do you prepare the rice paper because when i was doing my experimentation with <laughs> different asian dishes it's like why is this hard <laughs> you we <laughs> so many asian grocery stores carry this now but they make a very specific thing so that it is to the shape of like half of the rice paper so it's circular okay. Yeah. And you would dip it in and just like um, spin it in a circle. I I'll like send you um, I'll send you it in the in the chat. But mm -hmm. yeah, you dip it in water real quick, and we have these like pans that you put them on. I'm currently drying flowers on it, but I can show you. It's like this. It has a bunch of holes, and you just mm -hmm. put the the wet like rice paper on it. Um, yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, it's always nice to like experiment. I think Vietnamese dish is one of the dishes that is nice to experiment on. And if you have, you're lucky to have somebody to like coach you <laughs> and give you like some background. I didn't meet you before, Christina, so I was on my own experimenting. <laughs> I about it. <laughs> so yeah. So does anybody else have any um, comments? Um, Maria, Didla, or Etty, Dan? You can unmute yourself and like um, just say out loud your questions. Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Uh, it yeah. looks really, really good. I just want to eat. Um, the only thing dish that I try is uh, Vietnamese is the the soup, the pho, mm -hmm. and I really mm -hmm. love it. But I will try this one. <laughs> looks really good. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Good. 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 All right. Thanks, Adrian. Thank you so yeah, much, welcome. Adrian. Um, that's going to be Thanks awesome. for having me. Yes. Um, so Adrian contributes, aside from um, being invited today as a guest, she also contributes uh, recipes um, to our recipe of the week uh, using the farm fresh vegetables that um, she receives like once a month. So she experiments uh, with uh, those vegetables and... Uh, yeah, and because professionally she does this, you can see like graphically how it is so presented nicely. <laughs> so we're privileged that uh, we're working with her and collaborating with her um, on this aspect. And we hope to uh, bring her in um, other occasions in the future. Yeah, so thank you so much.
Yeah. <laughs> Yay. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I've been really enjoying uh, working with everyone so far. Great, great.